Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast with Bryce Johnson. It's a show that unpacks sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Enjoy inspiring conversations and thought-provoking interviews. You'll hear stories from people that will inspire, challenge, and encourage you. Now, from the Unpacking It studios in Charlotte, North Carolina, uniting sports fans everywhere, here is Bryce Johnson. And joining us now is Tony Kemp, a second baseman and outfielder for the AL West leading Houston Astros. He played college baseball at Vanderbilt, where he won SEC Player of the Year and Freshman of the Year. He made his Major League debut in 2016 and won a World Series ring with the Astros in 2017. He joins us today to talk faith, baseball, and life. Tony, thanks so much for being with us on Unpacking It. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, just doing, just doing good. Man, that's awesome. No, glad to have you. And and so we're we're almost to the All Star break. So so how have you felt about the season so far for you personally and for the team? Yeah, it's been going well. Uh, you know, we're still sitting first in the AL West, and uh, we had a little rough patch in this last road trip. Only won one game against the and the, the Yankees. The Reds played us really well. They won uh, three one run ball games. So. Uh, that's always it's always tough, but we won the series season against the Yankees, so that's what's that's what's important. You got to take the, the positives away from the road trip. But uh, you know, myself feel good about you know contributing to the team any way I can. Uh, you know, we got a we got a lot of good talent on this team with uh, Altuve, George Springer, Correa be back after All Star break, Brantley, Josh Reddick, Justin Verlander. I mean, the list goes on and on. But uh, yeah, we're uh, we're playing well right now. Just got to keep it going. That that's awesome. So, what is what is the mindset like now that you guys have already won a World Series? You know what it takes. So, at this point in the season, like like how do you a- approach it differently, having already done it before? Yeah, I think that's the advantage, obviously, of winning. Uh, you see what you have to do to get there, and uh, you know I think the guys are more hungry than ever, uh, just because losing to Boston at home, uh, especially me because I was the last out. I flew out to left field and. Uh, you know, you know, you you think about those things and you remember those things going into the off season. You kind of have a you have a different fire inside you that you you work toward. And you know, obviously, you want to be the best team in the in the big leagues, and uh, you know that's the goal. And I think you know this team's good because of just how they treat each other. And you know, everybody comes to the clubhouse in a in a in a positive in a positive manner, and uh, everybody's always just ready to work. And uh, you know, it shows. And uh, everybody gets along with everyone here. And Everybody has a certain amount of respect for each other, so I think that's important uh, when you uh, build a team. Absolutely. That's awesome. Tony Kemp, our guest right now on Unpacking It. And, and so I'm sure you've been watching the, the College World Series and, and you're proud of your alma mater, Vanderbilt. Uh, but, but what do you miss most about playing college baseball? <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, – last night I was, I was sitting in the cage and uh, I flipped on the game for about 30 seconds just to check in and see – uh, what the score was and we were we were up four to one at the time so I feel like we could have pulled the pulled the win out and and we did so uh yeah you know I think college baseball is just a whole different atmosphere and uh you miss it because you're all working toward one goal and you know there's no contracts there's no politics you know this guy is a first round draft pick so he has to play and uh you know it's just it doesn't matter what percentage of scholarship you're on it's you know, whoever's the best player is going to play. And, you know, I just miss that about college baseball. And, uh, just uh, it's, it's so unique and it's so innocent, so real. And, uh, you know, especially being with your, your guys, uh, you spend so much time together in the dorms and walking to class and lunch. And, you know, you're going through practices from, yeah, you know, I don't know, two, three hours. And then you go to study hall and then you, after study hall, you, um, and lunch your, or dinner, you're going back to the dorm. So uh, it's it's just a whole different grind you have with a, a different bunch of guys that are 18 to 21 years old. So it's a it's it's just a whole new it's a whole different ball game from high school to college. But you know, I remember seeing the last out being made in our super regional against Louisville. And yeah, it's tough. I remember obviously a lot of guys were crying because you know you, you realize that you're never gonna step foot on the college baseball field again and, and compete. So. Uh, yeah, I miss a lot of things about college, but uh, you know, once you can take that next step to pro ball, I think that uh, 
you know, that goes away a little bit. That's that's true. Well, I, I love college and, and had a great college experience myself. But but for you, when you look back at your time at Vanderbilt, not just from from a baseball perspective, but but what kind of impact did it have on you personally and then also on your faith during that time in your life? Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, you, you're still growing as a person and a, and a young man, you know, only being not coming in college at 18 years old and going through the highs and the lows. I mean, you learn a lot. You learn about yourself and time management. You learn about yourself and your faith. And, you know, I had a good good freshman year, uh, you know, like you said, when I see freshman of the year and uh, kind of thought I knew and I kind of thought I had things figured out and going to sophomore year and just boom, sophomore slump, just couldn't figure anything out, couldn't couldn't do anything right, hit about 260. And, uh, you know, I felt like there was a lot of improvements made. But, you know, I think that, uh, you know, with my faith, obviously God does things for certain reasons. And, um, you know, that's what faith is. You can't question God's plan. And, you know, I, I, I even assert that to my life now. It's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're questioning, if you're questioning what's going on uh, at the moment or what's going to happen in the future, you know, that's kind of, that's questioning God's plan. So you just have to live every day in the moment. And uh, what can you do for your teammates today? And, you know, I, I really think that, you know, those struggles through my sophomore year has led me to, you know, even have stronger faith today. Tony Kemp, our guest right now on Unpacking It. He's a second baseman and outfielder for the Houston Astros. And and so as we kind of progress throughout your, your baseball career and, and talk a little college baseball, but, but also mm-hmm. want to get your thoughts on, on minor league baseball because I'm just kind of fascinated by, by just how tough it is, you know, to get to the next level and, and to grind it out in, in minor leagues and so what was your experience like in the minors? And, and when you consider that season of your life, what, what are some things that come to mind? Yeah, the minor leagues is definitely, you know, I never use the word grind, but once you get to the minor leagues, uh, grind is definitely the word for it. Um, <laughs> you know, we still talk about it, you know, a bunch of the guys that are in the big leagues now with the Astros, you know, we still talk about how hard it is, what we do. You know, at a time, there's only 750 guys that can be on, you know, in the major leagues with 30 teams. And that's what's saying, man, there's still less than 20,000 big leaguers who's ever set foot on a big league field or been on a big league roster. There's still less than 20,000 ever since, you know, the early 1900s. So mm. that's, that's just wild to me. You can't even, you can't even fill up a, a big league, a big league stadium with all the big leaguers who have ever played the game, if you think about wow. it. So, yeah, it's, it's some things that, you know, people don't think about, you know, the just being in the elite category of, you know, how hard it is to do what we do. And, uh, you know, the minor leagues is a different grind because it's tough because you're not really in that college mode anymore. You're not, you're, you're with guys who've been in pro ball. Maybe you run into some guys who are high school picks and you just, it's a whole different broad of guys who get, you get brought into and it's your teammates and, um, you know, college, it's all about the team and, you know, once you get to minor leagues, it's about the team a little bit, but it's more about you making your own path, and it's kind of a dog eat dog world. And you know, I got I signed and got sent to Troy, New York, and played for the Tri City, uh, the the Valley Cats there. Stayed there for about a month or so, and got called up to Low A. And you know, that was the first time I was introduced to Carlos Correa, and you know, we've been great friends ever since 2013, and nice. we've played up the middle. Uh, mostly throughout our minor league, our minor league careers up until Double A, and then he moved. He moved up. He moved up a little faster than I did. <laughs> he got called up to the big leagues in 2015, and uh, I was in 2016. But uh, the minor league is just a different. It's a different world. You're it's 100 and 140 or so games, and uh, that's not including playoffs. And uh, you know the pay is you're getting paid about 400 bucks every two weeks, and wow. you know some guys get signing bonuses. You know some guys get paid more than other guys. You know depending on your signing bonus, but other than that, the pay is about 400 bucks every two weeks. It's tough. And most guys are living three or four to a to an apartment to an apartment two bedroom. You might have two guys living out in the in the in the common area in the living area. Uh, it's a different grind. Uh, I think that's the first time you get really introduced to how much taxes and uncle sam and how much taxes get taken <laughs> out of your paycheck you know you're 21 years old and you're not really sure how the world how the world works but you're introduced to taxes very quickly and you see that um you know those come out of your check pretty quick but you know everybody's minor league experience is different uh you know i i enjoyed mine because you're working towards getting to the big leagues and you know i remember 
get into the big leagues and playing for about a week or so, I'm like, man, like, all right, I can retire now. You know, this is my dream. I did my dream. But, no, you, you obviously you can't stop there. Obviously, you, you you want more in this game, but you know it's a it's a fun experience, and uh, it's you know those guys who are grinding out there, you know, just don't give up. All you know, there's always a new day tomorrow, and keep staying in it. That that's right, Tony Kemp, our guest right now on Unpacking It. Uh, he's with the Houston Astros, sharing a little bit about his journey uh, with us today, and. You know, not only is it hard to to make it to the big leagues, but then also to stay in the big leagues. And so, I want to go. You know, part of your story too is y- you make it in in 2016, but then you also went back down to AAA before returning to the Astros. And so, you know, what was that part of your your journey like, and 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 how was your faith challenged during that time? Yeah, I mean, hey, I understood that we had a good team. Um, I was a rookie at the time. Uh, I wasn't starting that much. I was more of a pinch hit role, late pinch runner mode. And, uh, you know, I would start every now and then. And actually, a, it's actually a funny story. I got sent down when we were playing the Kansas City Royals. And my good friend now, he's actually a groom in my wedding, A.J. Reed. Oh, nice. He was uh, he, he was the number one prospect at the time for the Astros. And he had been killing it, hitting 350, 360. And it, it was about time for him to, to come up. He was in, uh, he was in AAA. And, they're like, hey, we're going to call up AJ. I think it's the time. The time's right, and uh, we're going to option you back down to the minor leagues. And you know, which was which was okay. Um, it, it, it's all silver. It's all silver linings and how God aligns your your path. And when I got optioned, my wife was actually my wife now was actually in Toronto, and she was actually she wasn't allowed to come into the United States because she still had her Canadian passport, and oh. they thought that she was moving back to the states. And turns out. Uh, she wasn't able to see my big league debut. So once I got option, I was able to fly up to Toronto for three days and hang out with her and kind of share that moment and that experience with her. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, obviously your faith is going to be tested because once you get option, you're like, all right, I got that taste of the big leagues. I did okay, but can I play in the big leagues? Like, can I play with the big boys? And, you know, I felt like I could. I got, you know, called back up, you know, right before September or so and uh, did well and hit a hit a home run on, on my friend that passed away his, his like two days before his birthday and uh, hit a home run. And, you know, that home run, you know, was for him. And, uh, you know, just things, uh, it, it's funny how talking about it now, you really don't think about it, but how many times God works in your, in your life. And, you know, you never know when he's going to, you know, pop up and surprise you, but you just have to, you know, keep that faith and uh, keep it strong. Absolutely. And so uh, along those lines, uh, looking at your, your Twitter bio, you've got two different verses on there with a very similar theme. So, so Hebrews 10.35, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. And then Proverbs 3.5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So, so why did you put those two on the Twitter bio and, and what do those two verses mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I love going through the Bible and I love here he takes us through verses. We're going through Matthew right now and uh, you know, because we're not able to go to church on Sundays, obviously, those two verses are huge for me. Just because, you know, in baseball, you can you can get down on yourself really easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a game it's a game of failure, and you have to know that. You know, you're you're a Hall of Famer if you're successful three out of ten times in this game. That's uh, that's Hall of Fame status. <laughs> so, just being able to know that it's a game of failure. Um, Hebrews ten thirty five. You know, do not throw away your confidence. Uh, because it will be richly rewarded um, is big for me just because the confidence you need to walk up to the plate, to go play defense, uh, you know, confidence is the number one thing in this game. You know, first thing is confidence and the rest are your abilities and your mental and you have to be confident in yourself and uh, know that you have the abilities to play this game. So, you know, don't throw your confidence away. I think that is just, you know, it it encompasses everything that I believe in. And Proverbs uh, 3, 5 is don't lean on your own understanding it's huge for me because we go through this life as humans and we want to be in control of everything. And, you know, that's not the case. You know, God's in control of uh, everything that we do day in and day out. He's already, he's already scheduled everything in our lives. So, you know, being able to, you know, rely on those verses is, is everything for me because, uh, you know, we can't do this life alone. We just have to make sure that we're just day in, day out, not taking advantage of, you know, the good life that we live and uh, just being blessed every day. Amen. Amen. Well, Tony, I, I know you got to get going, uh, but but one other thing I wanted to mention, 
uh, is also on your Twitter bio. You're a two-time fantasy football champion. I'm, I'm a huge fantasy football guy, and, and I've won a few rings myself. So, so what's your secret to success? <laughs> yeah, I enjoy fantasy football. It's always, it's always fun. My wife actually has gotten into it, and she won the league last year, so she's been rubbing it all in my face. Uh, but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's good. It's all, about, it's all about the sleeper picks. I think it's not about, you know, you have to have a good first, first round draft pick I'd say other than that you know I think third third fourth and fifth rounds are the most important because those are the guys that are aren't aren't huge names but they're guys that uh could have breakout seasons and you just have to scout those guys I like it I'm right there with you well Tony man it was awesome to have you on the show today really appreciate you joining us here on unpacking it and, and wish you the best the the rest of the way this season and, and good luck to the the Houston Astros the the rest of the way as well so thanks so much hey Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. For more information about the show, our events, and other resources, visit unpackingit.com. That's U-N-P-A-C-K-I-N-I-T dot com. We hope you are encouraged, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. To support our show and Unpacking It Ministries with a financial gift, visit unpackingit.com slash donate. We look forward to unpacking sports, faith, and life with you again next week.